Erased, eliminated, unknown. The Pokemon you know is not the Pokemon Japanese people know. It is different. And I'm not just talking about the small things, like lengthening shorts and removing wings, turning hyper balls into ultra balls, tweaking interesting art into vanilla art, banning the odd episode, removing online functionality, or editing out somewhat controversial gestures. No, I'm talking about rich Japanese cultural elements that are tragically erased to make Pokemon fit the cultural norms of your country and my country. Elements that are too risque, too strange, or so uniquely Japanese that the localization teams decide it best to eliminate them. Not always, but often to the detriment of the final experience. There is so, so much you may be missing out on, so today we are going to unmask three very distinct, very Japanese elements of the Pokemon world that have been cut out of international versions ranging from the tasty to the spiritual to the bijou ga bijou bijou. So don't stay in the dark, enjoy the scoop, and let's begin. Food. It is the most important thing in your life, next to water, and your Nintendo Switch. And it's something everyone can relate to. Something that brings happiness to us like nothing else. Of course, different cultures have different foods, and the bowl of lucky charms that seems so normal to you may be as alien as Eternatus to a kid on the other side of the world. So, the localized versions of games and anime often tweak the menu to suit the local tastes. And Pokemon is no different. The localization process can turn alcohol into orange juice, eggplants into corn, and you may remember awkward moments like in episode 2 of the original Pokemon anime when Ash calls Professor Oak and we see that he is clearly cooking up a pot of ramen only to end the call by telling Ash that his pizza had arrived, apparently forgetting the tasty dish on the Bunsen burner just behind him. I guess he's got other things on his mind. Of course, in the original Japanese version, the reason he ends his call is because his noodles are getting overcooked. So the scene actually made sense. In all seriousness, localization changes like this are very important to avoid stilted dialogue, cultural references that would only confuse viewers in other countries, and in this case, while ramen, izakayas, and other Japanese foodie things are pretty popular in western countries nowadays, it's important to note that back in the 90s, those things would have befuddled 93% of American kids tuning into the anime. So four kids played the pizza card to keep it simple. But perhaps the most famous example of Japanese food censorship in Pokemon is Brock's favorite treat, Jelly Donuts. Let me tell you, it tormented me trying to find jelly donuts that looked anything like Brock's jelly donuts when I was a kid. I looked and I looked, but I never did find anything quite like them. Because, of course, they were not jelly donuts. But they were, in fact, Japanese onigiri. Balls of short grain rice, often wrapped in roasted seaweed and packed with a tasty, salty, or sour filling, ranging from grilled salmon flakes to pickled plum to tuna and mayonnaise to etc etc. Onigiri are a popular snack and lunchtime food in Japan that you can find in grocery stores and convenience stores wherever you go and I used to eat them most days of the week until Mama Weiwei moved in. And you can be sure that they were healthier than whatever it was that 4Kids was encouraging American kids to cram down their throats. Pizza, jelly donuts, hmm. Of course, calling rice balls jelly donuts was clearly confusing, so in the Advanced Generation series, 4Kids started visually changing onigiri into subs and sandwiches, effectively Thanos snapping any reference to onigiri out of existence. And just like that, new viewers would never be exposed to the magic magic and mystery of the mouth-watering rice balls, the jelly donuts that little Charles got so excited about. However, foods aren't the only Japanese aspects that have been eliminated from Pokemon over the years, so let's dig into one feature of the early games that was simply too exotic for Western audiences. And no, I'm not talking about those swimmer sprites. But before we get into the thick of it, I have a quick offer for you. Basically, I noticed that many people commenting on my motivational backstory videos have been trying to work through problems in their own lives. So in addition to what I put out in those videos, I wanted to share more of my most effective techniques for happy living that I think anyone can benefit from. Which is why I created a class about grounding ourselves to what is really good in life that you can enjoy with a free trial over on Skillshare. Skillshare is most famous for its photography, film, and drawing classes, but it's also a great place for creative people to reinvent their goals, their careers, and their quality of life. I've been self-employed, picking up skills from Skillshare to run the hustle for years now, and video making is one of the most useful skills you can learn. So for anyone just getting started, check out DIY video production for content creators from setting up to editing by Enrico Luzzi on Skillshare. As Enrico lays out the fundamentals to create quality videos no matter what the budget, has you cranking out videos right away in his class project, and I've put many of Enrico's tips into action myself. Whether you are into video making, pixel art, game development, manga drawing, writing, or something else, you're sure to find a 
class on Skillshare and you can enjoy unlimited classes from the Skillshare library for free since the first 1000 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So snag the free trial, best of luck skilling up and with that said, it's back to today's chat. P.S. I would love your feedback on my class, so see you there. You may be familiar with some of the wacky accusations levied against Pokemon by religious fundamentalists around the world in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Accusations which were pretty hilarious, given the lengths that localization teams had already gone to, to scrub most explicitly Japanese spiritual and religious elements out of the international releases of the games. For example, Pokemon Gold and Silver's Sage and Medium sprites were altered to remove the Japanese prayer poses and prayer beads. The 20th episode of the original anime series turned the Ofuda of Japanese Shintoism and Buddhism into anti-ghost stickers. And I'm sure you remember how a certain Buddhist symbol representing infinite mercy, often confused with a less savory symbol, was removed from the Pokemon trading card game. But here's one particular change that had a much more significant impact on the world feel of the early Pokemon video games. You may recall that in the English adaptations of the first generation Pokemon games, there were these curious rounded statues positioned in a handful of buildings located in Celadon City. If you interact with them, they'd return the text, it's a sculpture of Diglett. And you know what? This flavor text certainly fooled me, because that thing looks like a Diglett. But that is simply not what it's meant to be. And while we can appreciate how brilliantly this text was localized, a distinctly Japanese aspect of the game's world building was lost in the process. If you interact with those Diglett sculptures in the Japanese version of the games, they actually return the text Butsudanda. It's a Butsudan, aka a Japanese Buddhist altar or shrine found in temples and homes across the country. Butsudan are typically raised ornate cabinets enshrining a highly revered religious object such as a painting a figure of a Buddha or Bodhisattva, or a scroll. The shrines are used to honor the Buddha as well as family members who have passed on and they function as the pillar of a household's spiritual faith. If you visited several Japanese homes, particularly in rural areas, or watched enough Japanese dramas and movies, then you have probably seen a Butsudan at some point. Japan certainly doesn't shy away from including things like religion, alcohol, and other quote-unquote controversial content in all ages anime and games. And personally, I think that this usually adds to the richness of the worlds, as well as to their appeal and relatability across age groups. In Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal, you can find Butsudan not just in Celadon City, but in many homes across Johto, with the additional Japanese flavor text, Butsudan da. Hmm. Osenko no nioi. It's a Butsudan. Hmm. The scent of incense. Text that would immediately create a sense of both nostalgia and otherworldliness for Japanese players, as the scent of incense is strongly associated with temples, shrines, and spirituality. Interestingly, in the English versions of the second generation games, there is no more mention of Diglett sculptures. Instead, the flavor text on these items goes like this. What is this? Oh, it's an incense burner. This text still doesn't create any of the spiritual impact present in the Japanese version, but it is closer to the source material than the Diglett sculpture line even if that thing really does look like a diglet. Anyways, the Butsudan is a deeply significant item in the lives of people from the culture wherein the Pokemon games originated. And bringing that rich, spiritual flavor, the feeling that the sacred plane is very much a part of the Pokemon world as well. This adds character to the games and deepens the connection to our own world in a meaningful way. So although it certainly would have confused most Western kids if the English localization team actually referenced the altars, the cost was something that projects a divine feeling and something quite wonderful. And you can see many more of these missing elements throughout the games. For instance, Celebi's Japanese Pokedex entry in Pokemon Crystal reads worshipped as a forest god, but the English entry reads revered as a guardian of the forest, basically removing or dumbing down the religious or spiritual element. And likewise, the flavor text for the special Butsudan in Kurt's house is altered to erase any religious connotations. This is dedicated to the god of the forest, was changed to it's a statue of the forest's protector. Just like that, the range of emotions connected to the sacred and the spiritual were clipped from the English versions of the video games. Just a little bit of text can change everything. And actually, the thing that sets the Japanese Pokemon experience apart from any other is exactly that. The words, the language, the scripts. You are probably familiar with just how different the names of the Pokemon are from one language to the next. 
For example, Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee, obvious references to Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee, are known as Ebiwara and Sawamura in Japanese, referencing the Japanese world champion flyweight boxer Hiroyuki Ebihara and the famous kickboxer Tadashi Sawamura. And the names and references are altogether different in other languages as well. The puns and culturally relevant references of each Pokemon name in each language the series has been translated into are a whole lot of fun to break down. But I think the biggest impact that differences in language make can be seen in the dialogue of the Pokemon anime. Honestly, it is amazing just how different a given episode can feel when watched in Japanese or English, thanks to culture-specific gags, language structures, and differences in our ways of thinking. Breaking down these differences could be a lifetime's work on its own, but here's one example from episode 7 of the original Pokemon anime that just happened to strike me when I was watching the episode again recently. In the Water Flowers of Cerulean City, Ash battles his companion and Cerulean City gym leader Misty to earn the Cascade Badge. But of course, the Team Rocket trio interrupts Misty and Ash Ash's gym battle by drilling through the wall equipped with a giant engine-powered vacuum hose to steal the gym's Pokemon. And as a preemptive strike, Meowth first sucks up the gym's swimming pool water, then spits it back out at Ash, Misty, and Misty's three sisters, dragging everyone into a swirling torrent. And the English and Japanese lines are very different. Whereas Wet English Misty generically exclaims, we've got to protect the Pokemon. Wet Japanese Misty says, oh no, the beautiful girls are soaking wet. But that translation doesn't do the line justice either, because the beautiful girls are soaking wet is a pun that only works in Japanese. Basically, bijo means beautiful girl, and bijo bijo sounds like beautiful girl, beautiful girl, but is actually a play on the onomatopoeia bisho bisho, which means soaking wet. For example, ame de bisho bisho ni natta. I got soaked because of the rain. It may not seem like much looking at this isolated example, but the dialogue of every Japanese Pokemon episode is packed with Japanese puns, wordplay, and funny cultural references that make this show an absolute blast to watch. Unfortunately, most of the jokes are completely lost in translation, resulting in English episodes that can have a really different feel to them, and that is before factoring in the Japanese to English dub factor. But there is a flip side to that, that sometimes these differences actually work in the English version's favor. For example, you might remember this scene from the Mewtwo Returns movie, in which the original trio are running down downhill as a storm sets in upon them. Holding a frying pan above his head, Japanese Brock says, In times like this, can't a frying pan become an umbrella? Which doesn't really add that much to what we see on screen. However, the four kids English dub turned the line into something legendary. Hey, I know, I'll use my trusty frying pan as a drying pan. Truly iconic. So although the changes to the dialogue and the erasing of various cultural elements that occur whenever Pokemon is translated into other languages can deprive foreign audiences of something special or create circumstances that are downright awkward, the tweaks can also be brilliant and make each anime or game episode in each language sparkle in their own way. Not to mention that, of course, erasing or altering certain Japanese elements makes the Pokemon franchise much more easily accessible to people around the world. Except for in those cases when entire Pokemon stories never even make it outside of Japan. One such story is Pokemon Rebirth, a manga in which humans and Pokemon trapped inside gemstones can fuse together into super warriors and duke it out in DBZ style battles. It's wacky, it's wild, and you can check out my video about it right here.